Part 1. You will hear a conversation between two people, a customer, Steve, and a customer care person. Steve has bought a new mobile phone and he is facing some problems related to it. You have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Good afternoon. May I help you? Good afternoon. Yes, actually, I have to complain about the phone which I've bought from your agency. OK. Can you give me your details? What is your name? The complaint is about phone. So, the answer to the query is phone, which is written as an answer for the example. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good afternoon. May I help you? Good afternoon. Yes, actually, I have to complain about the phone which I've bought from your agency. OK. Can you give me your details? What is your name? Steve Clooney. It's S-T-E-V-E. -E. Is it Clooney? C-L-U-N-E-Y? No, no, no. It's Clooney. C-L-O-O-N-E-Y. And your address, please? Lotus Road, 72N. L-O-T-U-S, Lotus Road. And it is near? Near Community Hall. OK, thank you. Could I just ask, when did you start having problems with your phone? It's only been two days. Um, today it's Friday, so I bought it on Wednesday. OK, hold on a minute. I am checking which series you had bought. Hmm, it's Maple Phone 4B, right? Yes, correct. Now look at questions 5 to 10. Now, tell me what sort of problems are you having with it? Well, the most dangerous thing, which I believe is when I talk on the phone, my ear immediately starts paining. And this had never happened before, as previously I had a Maple Phone 3A. Oh, that's strange. And any other problem? Yes, the other thing is that the battery dies in almost less than an hour. OK. And... Also, I forgot the charger wire is not in good shape and also it hangs frequently. Oh, that seems that there are a lot of problems. When can I come to replace it? Can you come on Sunday? Why not today evening? Actually, the set which you want to get replaced will arrive on Saturday. It is not available right now. But I can't wait that long. Still three days to go before Sunday comes. I understand your problem, sir, but I won't be able to give you the same set today. Then in that case, I want my money refunded, and you please forget about the phone. Sir, please try to understand. Let me ask my manager if we can arrange the set. OK. Sir, I have inquired. You can replace your set today itself, but for that you have to go to some other place. We know those dealers and they will replace your handset. OK, where will I have to go? It is a bit far away, away from the city. You give me the exact address. Yes, please. It is shop number 21346, Tech City, near Chow Mao Hotel. Can you guide me where is the Tech City exactly? 20 kilometres further from the Elephant Park. OK, I will just go now. Sir, the shop closes early, so you have got only two hours. You tell them that I'm coming and they have to replace my Maple 4B phone. Yes, sir. We have informed them. I hope I don't face any kind of problem in that. No, sir. Not at all. I can assure you that.
Okay, I will call you if I face any kind of issue.、Uh, what's your name? My name is Ricky. Okay, thanks, Ricky. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear the public relations officer from the council reviewing events that were hosted by the town in the previous year. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Kingstown has been a busy town this year, with some high-profile and new events happening in and around the area. In January, we hosted the National Kayak Selections, and this competition attracted a number of well-known paddlers, not just from this country, but from Canada, Ireland, England, and Australia. Following this event, we had the nation's top bowls players descend on the township. With the national championships taking place at the Kingstown Bowling Club, attracting well over 400 players, it was a resounding success, as you could see from the numbers thronging the bowling center in Main Street. February was the month for the seriously social rafting competition, and this was the first time Kingstown had hosted an event of this nature. It attracted 96 paddlers from all walks of life. Who enjoyed a great day of fun on the river? After the success of last year's open half marathon event, this year in March we hosted a women's only duathlon in an attempt to get more women involved in sport. The starting point was at the Kingstown Pool, but an extremely chilly evening saw a huge reduction in the numbers we were expecting. However, approximately 50 participants were not deterred from tackling the event. Which for many was the first time, and these hardy contestants went into the first 2.5k run with great enthusiasm. The cycle leg was extremely challenging because it was into a headwind all the way, and the last 5k run was no easier. At this point, I must thank all the volunteers who took time out to help make this event successful, especially the road marshals who did an excellent job. We must also thank the Kingstown Creative Pursuits Society for hosting the wonderful Autumn Festival. The women involved put on a magnificent demonstration of traditional and present-day craft work, ranging from ancient weaving techniques to modern pottery designs and sculpture. These ladies are highly skilled, and they got a good turnout on the day, which, by the way, they are thinking of making a biannual event. So. We might have a spring festival on its way. Winter brought with it the annual Kingstown Youth Tournament, which was a huge success, with the allocated team slots filling up fast. Teams consisted of approximately 15 youths, ranging in age from 8 to 18. The teams spent the day on the fields of Prince Park, playing a round-robin touch tournament system. The event, which drew large crowds of the public who cheered and gave lots of support and encouragement for the teams, showcased some outstanding youth talent. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions seventeen to twenty.
Now, what's coming up for the school holidays? Well, the town council has several plans lined up to keep the kids busy. Let's get straight into it. Program 1, which will take place around the Prince Park area, has a sports agenda and will have participants engage in a variety of sporting activities such as tennis, athletics, football and swimming. Program 2 is for the somewhat less active and more creative children. They will do most of their activities in and around the Lord Hall area. These will consist of cooking, craft, dance and hairstyling. You'd be surprised at the number of children who leap at the chance to learn to cook, not to mention the other activities. The hall will be positively buzzing, I can tell you. This is a great chance for your children to learn a new skill or brush up on one that they're already crazy about. Program 3 is for the more adventurous children. Because of this, we do insist on a minimum age limit of 11 years old. The Duke Recreational Area has been set aside for this program. Expect your youngsters to learn a lot about leadership and teamwork as they accomplish some of their missions. They'll engage in activities such as skateboarding, rafting, orienteering, mountain biking and trekking. Well, thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. In this section, you will listen to a speech given by Dalai Lama on the importance of emphasizing the equality of everyone as part of humanity. Now look at questions 21 to 27. My concern or feeling is that of course I'm Buddhist, but on further, deeper level, I'm a human being, one of the now nearly 7 billion human beings. I'm one of them. Humans are a social animal, so each individual's future entirely depends on the rest of humanity. So for my own self-interest, I have to think seriously about humanity. On the fundamental level, on the human level, according to my own experience, I know there are about 7 billion human beings. Each one wants a happy life. None of them wants suffering, and each one has every right to achieve that. There's no difference, whatever religious faith we may be, or as a non-believer, whatever social background we may come from, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, from a royal family or a beggar, we're the same human being on that level. We are the same. We all have the same right. I think, with many problems that we, humanity as a whole, are facing, we place too much emphasis on the secondary level differences. I think Buddha Shakyamuni's motivation for gaining enlightenment was meant for all sentiment beings. His whole life and his whole teaching were meant for sentiment beings, not only for Buddhists. Look back at the 20th century. I think the 20th century has become a very, very important century in the whole of human history. We invented many, many positive things. And at the same time, the 20th century has become a century of bloodshed, a century of violence. Even in the name of different religious faiths, there was violence and division. So the 20th century really has become a century of bloodshed, a century of violence. According to some historian, over 200 million human beings were killed. 
if such immense suffering really brought about some good things on this planet, brought a more peaceful, happier world, then such an amount of suffering could be justified. Now look at questions 28 to 30. But that's not the case. Even at the beginning of this century, some unhealthy things and unhappy things here and there. These are, I think, the result of symptom or past mistakes, past negligence. And then also concerning technology, there are immense advances, but that technology also sometimes added to the power of destruction. Science and technology themselves are wonderful, but in order to use them constructively, it ultimately depends on this, our hearts. It depends on the heart of the user of the technology, the user of the science and the knowledge of science. If you expect a better world to come about from money, to come about from science, to come about from technology, that's wrong. If you really want a better world, a happier world, it ultimately depends on this, our hearts. Intelligence and education are also not very certain to bring about a better world. All these troublemakers we've had, I think as far as their brain are concerned, these people were very smart. So it's their motivation here in their hearts. Anger, fear, hatred, suspicion, they are the cause of these problems. So first of all, in order to make this 21st century become a peaceful century, we have to think about inner peace. Peace is never achieved through declarations, through resolutions, through slogans. Peace must come through inner peace. That's the only way. So in order to create a happier world, ultimately you have to look at this. The motivation of each individual through a world body like the United Nations. You can build inner peace. Peace must come through people's inner peace on the individual level. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear part of the orientation in which Ava is shown the college's computer laboratory. First, you have some time to look at the questions. Well, as you can see, we have well over a hundred PC computers, as well as 20 Macintosh computers set up for those students who need to produce high-quality graphic design work. Of course, maintenance of all these machines and the equipment that goes with them, printers, fax machines, modems, etc., takes up almost all of my time. So, we have a number of rules. All students are expected to follow the rules, or they will be unable to use the lab in the future. And just about everybody needs to use the lab at some stage. First of all, log on procedure. All students have to log on. That is, enter their name and lab number before the program menu comes up on the screen. The reason is that if anything goes wrong with the machine, we can find out from you what it was you were doing when the problem occurred. And this can save a great deal of time when trying to solve the problem. Which brings us to the second rule. If something goes wrong, you mustn't just walk away from the computer or turn it off and pretend it hasn't happened. 
you must let me or one of my assistants know what has happened. And remember, we can always find out who was last using the machine. So, with these two simple rules, it becomes relatively easy to maintain so many machines. The third rule concerns the use of student disks. At no time are you allowed to bring your own disks into the laboratory. This lab is completely free of the need for student disks of any kind because each computer is linked to a network. And there are four networks, each of which has its own file-serving machine. We don't want you to bring along your own disks for two very good reasons. The first reason is because of copyright law. It's illegal to copy programs bought by the college. The second reason has to do with those nasty little programs called viruses, which can do a tremendous amount of damage. So, no student disks in the lab. We therefore insist that you leave your bags outside too, which is rule number four. Now, a network simply means a number of computers are linked together. In other words, can share information. There are three networks for the PC computers and one network for the 20 Macintosh machines. And that brings me to the fifth rule. Students must only access the network that is set up for their use. One of the three PC networks is only for first-year students to use, over here. Another is only for second-year students, over there along the back wall. And the third network, on the far right, is reserved for third-year student use. The Macintosh computer network is reserved for second- and third-year students only, unless you are a first-year student of the graphic design course. Rule 5. You can only access the network that is set up for your level. All networks have printout capability, and there is a charge per page on the laser printers. The dot matrix printers, which of course do not give such good quality printouts as the laser printers, are suitable mainly for giving a rough copy of your work. Uh, um, they are free for student use during class hours. After hours, a charge applies. Now, class hours, as you probably already know, are from 9 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon, Monday to Thursday, and until midday on Fridays. The computer lab, however, is open an hour before class begins each day and until 6 o'clock every afternoon, except for Fridays, when the lab closes at 5. Now, if you need any assistance with the software program you're working on, you can either look in the manuals located on the shelves below each machine, or if you're still having problems, you can ask one of the lab assistants to help out. In addition, there is always help at hand on screen, in most cases, simply by pressing function key number one at the top left of each keyboard. Well, that's about it. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention the computer lab card, which contains your log-on number. By producing your card, you can borrow computer books and manuals from the computer lab library. Um, OK, that's all I need to tell you at this stage. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.